Okay, so if we look at our slides, after soft edge duotone, there is full spectrum. Full spectrum is being able to use any colors you want within it. How does full spectrum work? It can work really dramatically. It can work really subtly. And it's definitely not necessary, but this is how I like to do it. I take my combined color layer, right? And I duplicate that. And then I double click on it and I'll do what's called a gradient overlay over all of it using layer styles. So you get to this by double clicking on the gray part of the layer. It will open up your layer style. So I click on gradient overlay. And I like to use a pretty crazy gradient overlay like I showed you last time. You can create your own. Now this is just to throw like variation into all of your colors. In painting, it would be called glazing. So we're not replacing anything. We're just kind of tinting everything towards warms and cools. So now I can play with the opacity of that, and you can see how that can affect all my colors, right? So that's an example of, of full spectrum. And then I also like to play with different blending modes on it. So I might try pin light, right? And then I can see if I like that at all. And I like it some, but maybe I want to take the opacity down a little bit. Or maybe I want to erase it away from some areas, like here. So I just use my eraser. And keep it on other areas. And now, before I'm finished, there's one last step. And that's just to make sure it's all clean and versatile. So I'm going to make a new duplicate of my background. So I have white gray and now I'm going to fill my new duplicate with black to see if there's anything else I need to do to clean it up because it should look good if it's a full color spot illustration it should be fully contained and it should look good on all backgrounds black gray and white just like a sticker right just like a, a good design okay once you're finished with that you're going to turn off all your backgrounds. So it's just the, the grid. You turn on all the layers you want, right? I can turn on certain layers. These are the other ones I was playing with before at different amounts. I mean, there's just so many options built into this one Photoshop file. God, I don't know what I like more or not. <laughs> And of course, any time, the reason we learn cut edge, or rather hard edge and soft edge duotone, is you can apply it really at any time on any coloring layer once you have your flat color in. So I can give myself little hard edged highlights on these toenails if I want. And then I think I'll be done, right? Maybe on this buckle. Just these little things you can do. Little scallops. All right, so now I'm going to save it, Command S, make sure you save it with your name, and then I'm going to save it as a PNG. So save a copy and say PNG. Now you're going to have the option, I'm going to show you, uh, that you can do more with this PNG than just put it into Canvas. But first, to finish up my assignment, I'm going to put it into Canvas along with my sketch and my line art, right? That's all I need. My sketch, my line art. So I'll erase these process steps for you. and my digital coloring. So I'm looking for my PNG, I'm dropping that in. 
And in our presentation critique, I know that we're not all going to be finished with our digital coloring fully, but hopefully you've got all the flat color in. Another thing I can do is I can open up my PNG and I can just in preview and just very quickly go to tools, adjust color. And what I can do is just say auto levels because sometimes you'll just work on the histogram. I can saturate it. I can desaturate it. I can kind of adjust it here a little bit. Sometimes that can help, right, to optimize it. And then I submit it because this is looking a little washed out with all of my different color layers, right? So now I just kind of cleaned it up just using preview. And it might look better. So remember all of our skills, right? Now we're going to use this spot illustration in our next project. So once you've posted it, you have an option of going to this site that you'll find under our links. I'm not going to go to it because I don't want to make that public on the YouTube, but that site is one called Redbubble. And we don't have a class account for Redbubble. Instead, you can for free sign up and create your own account. This is my account, right? These were my spot illustration examples from last semester. And you can post them and then you can use them to make any number of products that you want. So I'll demonstrate. Let me log in quickly. Uh, I hate this. <laughs> I don't like training self-driving cars just to get into my websites. Okay, so now I'm in, and what I can do is add a new artwork. And when I do that, I'm just going to drag and drop it. I'm going to use the PNG because remember it needs a, to be an online format, but this PNG has no background. This is optional, but a lot of fun. So I'm going to give this just a name really quick. Why I, I show Redbubble, I'll leave everything blank for now is you can see kind of the versatility of a, of a well thought out design. So I can put it on a hat. I can put it on a shirt. I can put it on a tote bag. I can put it on a journal. I can put it on a phone case. I can put it on a laptop bag, a laptop sticker, whatever it might be. And I can change the background behind it because it's a spot illustration. Right? That's the difference between a full illustration and a spot illustration. And then basically I set all these settings. I can make face masks, I can make leggings, I can make backpacks, clocks, you know, buttons, just everything off of that one high quality PNG. The leggings are actually kind of cool. <laughs> and you can adjust all these things. And then at the bottom you say whether it's mature content or not, definitely not. I'm not a very mature artist. And then um, you can just say right here who can view this work, just like when you do your Google Slides. And I can say only me for now. And then you, you also have to check that you own the copyright to it, right? That you have the right to sell this artwork. Now, if you're just publishing it for yourself, I don't think anyone's going to catch that you're doing a RoboCop tribute t-shirt for yourself. But if you make that public, that will get caught pretty quickly because there's a lot of licensing bots out there that, that check for copyright infringement. Now, what happens then? You don't get sued right away, <laughs> not unless you make a lot of money at it. But what they will do is they will automatically take it off the account and then they'll give you a warning. And if you have more warnings, you won't be allowed to, to post any work. But... I just posted this for myself. It allows me to see how it would work as a product. So for fun, if you do this step, it's nice to see what product image you think looks really good for your artwork. Like let's say a refrigerator magnet. I love magnets. So I might make a screen grab of that. 
and then for fun post that into my assignment just to show you if you do a good full color spot illustration with vector line art it's fully scalable the benefit is you have a product that then you can sell right it could be a t-shirt design it could be a magnet it could be a sticker so i'll say optional example of a product sample from redbubble Dot com. So just go to redbubble.com if you want to try that out with your own work. You can do it from any computer. All right. So our presentation critique question that you're all going to answer for your work, as long as you've got something uploaded that's colored, is a part of your digital coloring that you're proud of, that you think looks pretty good. So for me, I'm not happy with all of it. I do like how this hose looks. <laughs> This combination of, really, when all is said and done, this actually has a little bit of full spectrum in it because it goes from a warmer gray to a bluish purple. But it's also got some soft edge duotone, uh, some hard edge duotone to it. I like how that looks. I think it needs work in the face of the lion on the tail. I do kind of like how the helmet, helmet looks, but I'm noticing lots of shadows I want to put in for other parts. So it's in progress, and we'll have the option to keep building it. All right. Now I'm going to make sure I save all my work into my one folder, even my product example. And then we are done with assignment five.